Saitama vs Goku has been one of the most infamous debates in anime history, and also just internet history too. The general conclusions that people come to is that it's a very one-sided fight, however it ranges between who is the one doing the stomping, with one side of the argument saying that Saitama is an infinite gag character would one-shot anybody, and the other side says that Goku is showing just far more impressive feats of power than Saitama, because I know that no matter what I say, there will be people who disagree. I will say my opinions, but that's not really the point. To go through every single way I have seen Saitama being scaled, so that no matter what opinion you have about his power, you will know how strong he is when compared to Dragon Ball as a series. From the insane downplay to the insane highballing. It will be mostly like just power I'll be using for this, as if we did it for speed as well, we would be here for several decades. So I'll make sure to cover that stuff and his abilities first, before getting into the meat and potatoes of the video. The only other issue that there could be is that there are plenty of ways to scale Dragon Ball, so I'll call those out as I go along. If you enjoy this video and want to see more like it, then make sure to like, subscribe and comment your opinions of the video, and let's just get into it. For starters, I'll talk about Saitama's speed. During the fight with Cosmic Garo, he was able to move so fast that he caused constellations of light within a, like a short amount of time, requiring him to move it over 275,000 times faster than light itself. He also shows the ability to grow during battle, and his speed will greatly improve as well. Abilities wise, Saitama does have a lot. He has accelerated development, supernatural willpower, he's a martial artist, has power mimicry, underground mobility, acrobatics, self momentum, enhanced senses, after image creation, pseudo flight, air manipulation, and shockwave generation, non physical interaction, limited telepathy, overwhelming aura, water walking, self sustenance, breath attacks, and resistances to pain, psychokinesis, extreme temperatures, ice manipulation, fire manipulation, durability negation, sound manipulation, light manipulation, poison manipulation and radiation. If we use the alternate timeline Saitama here, he would have even more abilities such as time travel, body control, matter and antimatter manipulation, attack reflection and statistics amplification. Needless to say, Saitama's surprisingly got like a good set of abilities. The lowest I have ever seen Saitama being scaled is that he is city level to city level plus. This is because he's easily able to one-shot demon and dragon tier threats, which can threaten a city or multiple cities. With this scaling, Saitama easily one-shots Kid Goku and Yamcha in the Emperor Pilaf saga as the best feat that Goku has is crushing this boulder which is larger than himself requiring him to output the equivalent of 0.061 tons of TNT, which is only enough to destroy a single building, much less entire cities. Even when Goku goes into his Azaru form, which increases his power tenfold, it doesn't even come close to Saitama's level. However, Saitama would get beat by Master Roshi, who at this point could destroy the entire moon, with a blast that is so big that some people calculate it out to 52 zettatons of TNT, or enough to destroy small planets, moving at 0.098 times faster than light, so while Satama would be much faster, he would get one shot by Roshi pretty easily. The next way to scale Saitama is that he's able to destroy multiple continents in a single punch. This is because he's easily able to deflect Boros' collapsing Star Roaring Cannon, which could wipe Saitama off the face of the Earth, with a punch so powerful that when you know split across the entire planet, his punch would be equal to 2.51 exatons of TNT, or enough to destroy multiple continents. Uh, with this scaling, it is debatable if he could beat Master Roshi due to the speed gap. While yes, Master Roshi is much more powerful than Saitama and could one-shot him, Saitama would be way way too fast for him to hit. Even with Kid Goku being able to run and grab Master Roshi's sunglasses before a solar flare could reach him, a flash of light, it doesn't really come close to Saitama's speed. Saitama would likely wear Master Roshi down before eventually getting the win, especially because the power gap isn't so large compared to city level Saitama, though you could still argue that Master Roshi could win as it is still a fairly big gap. After this in Dragon Ball, characters get unquantifiably stronger, to the point where not even Master Roshi could seal away an old, decrepit King Piccolo while Goku, while heavily injured, could one-shot him after some training and get his potential unlocked. With the only other statement of note is that King Piccolo said he could destroy the planet if he wanted to, which could imply planet-level Piccolo. 
If this would result in Saitama and King Piccolo being pretty debatable as King Piccolo would be at least 23,681 times stronger than Saitama, while Saitama would be roughly 137,000 times faster, meaning that he could argue as a stalemate as Saitama isn't strong enough to win but too fast to get hit. This is similar to the moon level scaling for Saitama as Saitama was able to punch supernatural water with enough power to equal 41.66 exatons of TNT which would make Demon King Piccolo only 1,400 times stronger than him. Still a large amount, but it's far closer than before. I would say it's a stalemate, but if I had to pick a winner, I would pick Saitama, simply because he is much faster than Demon King Piccolo is stronger than him. Next, the planet level scaling. This scaling has to do with Saitama blowing away Boros' final attack, however, and in the anime it's stated to be able to destroy an entire planet, unlike the webcomic and the manga. There's also Cosmic Garo, who Saitama is able to fight. Cosmic Garo could create a gamma ray burst which can output the equivalent of 18.66 Yota tons of TNT, or enough to destroy large planets. This would mean that Saitama would very easily be able to stop Dragon Ball and even likely the Saiyan Saga. This is because, well, you can argue that Vegeta would be stronger due to having a higher power level than King Vegeta, who could destroy three planets with nothing but the swipe of his hand, Saitama would still be far faster, and with the ability to grow and all of his abilities, he would make light works with of the likes of Nappa and Goku. Vegeta does have his Ozaru form, which does multiply his power speed and durability by 10, which would give him a greater gap in power. It's still not quite enough to reach Saitama's speed. If we have Kid Goku at light speed to take his power level, then divided by Ozaru Vegeta's power level, so then we can get the theoretical top speed of his, uh, Goku in the Tien, like, Tien Shinhan saga had a power level of 180, Ozaru Vegeta's power level is 180,000, meaning that Ozaru Vegeta would be 1,000 times faster than light. It is still over 275 times slower than Saitama though, so in order to see who's more likely to win, we have to look at how big the strength gap is. King Vegeta could wipe out three planets with a swipe of his hand, being equal to 13 Nina tons of TNT. Doing some division and multiplication to get the Ozaru Vegeta's power level, uh, Vegeta would be able to output the equivalent of 234 Nina tons of TNT, or be 12,500 times stronger than Saitama. Basically, Saitama would be way too weak to hurt him, meanwhile Ozaru Vegeta is just more likely to get one hit off him than Saitama whittling him down the whole time. That doesn't mean that Saitama cannot get any further in the verses, scaling this Ozaru Vegeta actually has a power level higher than the Ginyu Force, Frieza's big group of elite soldiers. However, given the hacks the Ginyu Force has, Saitama would likely lose to time stop and being able to swap bodies, not to mention the strength gap still being quite potent. Saitama wouldn't really be able to do much. The next form of scaling is Star Level. This is because Saitama is able to deflect Bor Boros's collapsing Star Roaring Cannon, which can destroy entire stars according to the One Punch Man compass. And Saitama should be much higher than this uh, due to, you know, holding back while performing defeat. With this, he would be much stronger than Super Sa or Super Saiyan Goku and 100% Frieza in the manga. This is because upscaling the King Vegeta feat to Frieza and Goku with power levels of 150 million and 2 or 120 million, they'd be able to output the equivalent of 195 tenatons of TNT and 156 tenatons of TNT. Both values are powerful enough to destroy regularly dark-sized stars, but on the lower end as such. Considering Saitama is able to one-shot someone of this level, then he would be able to do the same to Super Saiyan, Goku and Frieza. Upscaling the speed in Goku and Frieza would actually be faster than Saitama by upscaling light speed kid Goku. Goku and Frieza would be 833,000 times faster than light, or just over 3 times faster than Saitama. So, for the same reason that Uzaru Vegeta would beat Saitama, it is just more likely that Saitama would land a hit on Goku and Frieza uh, by taking them down bit by bit. Uh, however, Goku and Frieza do have the Destructo Disc or something of that level in Frieza's case, which can cut through people much stronger than them, so you could argue they could beat Saitama that way. However, anime Goku and Frieza are a bit different, with Frieza being able to survive the blast of Namek, which was so powerful it could be seen from outside of the galaxy, meaning that the blast would be equal to 400, uh, 943 megafold, or enough power to destroy solar systems. So with the power and speed advantage, there isn't too much that Saitama you know, wouldn't be able to do. 
uh, with his only way of winning being able to grow in power and just grow above that uh, throughout the fight. Mecha Frieza after this arc is stated to output the equivalent of 10 times the power of that on Namek, further increasing the value to 9.43 Megafo. Even if we say that Saitama is as strong as the most powerful amount of energy to destroy a star, he would still be over 414 million times stronger or weaker than Goku and Frieza. Meaning that star level Saitama stops at the end of the Namek arc and not much beyond that, at least in the anime. The most commonly accepted level of power for Saitama uh, is his ability to, to destroy multiple solar systems due to his clash with him and Garo being able to send countless stars in space flying which would require the power of 3.4 to the power of 63 joules. So 3.4 with 63 zeros behind it. Uh, this is actually a low end of the calc which I'll get into later. With this, he is leagues stronger than Mecha Frieza, with the only other level of power that's comparable to this in the Android Saga and the Cell Saga, as the Cell Saga, is a, or well, Cell himself, is able to destroy the solar system. Granted, if you use the anime, this is a given, but Saitama would be much stronger than this. Cell would be leagues faster than Saitama, however, but this time there's no hard numbers to say for specifics. That said, Cell is a genius, has tons of techniques including the Kienzan, and has a high level of regeneration which makes it um, more powerful when he regenerates due to Zenkai's. However, Cell can be scaled to multi-solar system as well due to the guidebooks in Dragon Ball stating that solar systems are in a nebula of innumerable stars, requiring that if Cell was to destroy this nebula as well of innumerable stars, he would have to output the equivalent of 1.268 exafold. With this, Cell would be around the same level of Saitama, like the same level of power as Saitama, but be leagues faster. And considering how they both grow stronger as they fight, Cell would eventually destroy him with a scaling. Even with galaxy level scaling, which is the high end calc for Saitama versus Garo, it is still very debatable. Cell versus Saitama would realistically be a stalemate with solar system scaling as. If we take the highest end of solar system busting power, Saitama would still be over 33 billion times stronger than Cell and more durable than him too, but would be leagues slower than him as we already said. However, multi-solar system scaling for Cell would have him be 2.6 million times weaker. At this point, it's impossible to, to say for certain who would win in the fight and it's quite debatable. Moving into the Boo Saga, another big speed feat is shown in the anime where Goku in base and weighted Pycon travel across the entire afterlife in a short amount of time. The afterlife is stated to be as long as the universe, which would require them to move at 4.83 quadrillion times faster than light, or 15.9 billion times faster than Saitama, uh, but that's only if you have, you know, you can't you can have Saitama faster in terms of scaling, which I'll get into later. Uh, in terms of power, the Boo Saga is at least multi-solar system level as Majin Boo could destroy galaxies in a few years, which would require him to destroy multiple solar systems at the very least. There are characters who can scale much higher than this and can destroy multiple galaxies to multiple universes as, for example, Kid Boo is stated able to destroy the Grand Kai planet, which takes up a large amount of space in the afterlife which is universe size meaning that the planet itself would be as big as multiple galaxies. The universal characters consist of Buhan and Vegito, who are the top of the Dragon Ball Z food chain in terms of power, as Buhan could destroy the living universe just by screaming, and Vegito in his Super Saiyan form could easily stomp him. Even if you scale Saitama to Universal, he would still be far too slow to do anything as base Goku performed this feat and even if you apply he didn't get stronger after this, which is, you know, complete BS because he trained, his speed could be multiplied up to 400 times on top of that uh, with his Super Saiyan 3 form. Saitama can scale to Universal as he fought Garo who had an understanding of all flowing energies in the universe and is stated to have infinite power over and over, which would be Universal Plus. I don't fully agree with this scaling myself, but as I said, this video is for literally any Saitama scaler regardless of my opinion. That said, you can argue that Saitama is much faster than anyone in Dragon Ball Z as with the help of Garo, he was able to move through time. In order to move through time with sheer speed alone, your speed must be completely immeasurable. With this scaling, he would utterly speed blitz anyone in Z and just win that way. 
Going into Dragon Ball Super and the Battle of Gods arc, we get the infamous feat of Goku fighting Beerus in similar fashion that Saitama and Garo did, with their punches colliding, being powerful enough to destroy the universe. The universe within Dragon Ball is much larger than our own, with the afterlife not only being stated to be a universe in size, but the afterlife only being a small portion of the overall macrocosm, which is bare minimum a universal level feat. Goku at this point would be much stronger than the Buu Saga's strongest Vegito. This is because despite Goku and Vegeta training and getting stronger than they were in the Buu Saga, meaning that Vegito would be even stronger, Goku still like fought Beerus and thought that Vegito would not stand a chance against him, meaning that Vegito uh, would be weaker than Super Saiyan God, especially considering he was confident in fighting Beerus within his Super Saiyan God form. This would mean in terms of power, it would rival Saitama's infinite level scaling, especially if you use the old statement of the Dragon Ball universe being infinite in size. God Goku would be around this level. Not to mention that he's even able to react to the shockwaves flying across the entire universe in mere seconds, meaning that he is able to react to things flying across an infinite distance in a short amount of time. This means you could place Battle of Gods Goku at Universal Plus with infinite speed, however, while it seems close, Saitama would still win with immeasurable speed scaling. Of course, if you don't buy that, Saitama gets speed blitzed into an oblivion, even without the infinite speed argument. However, with a measurable speed, he would be faster than Goku. You may be wondering how infinite can be slower than a measurable, since they seem to just kind of be the same thing to the casual person. But you see, there are different sizes to infinity. The easiest way to tell the difference is that Goku would basically be able to move when time is frozen, while Saitama is able to outright go backwards in time with sheer speed alone, which is just more impressive. I guess now would be a good time to address the argument of Saitama goes back in time and turns Kid Goku into a prune or something. Uh, because the way that Dragon Ball works with time travel is very different to how it works in One Punch Man where when you go back in time and cause something different to happen, the timeline won't change, it'll just cause a separate timeline to form. Uh, with this, it's kind of hard to tell, like, which is, it just entirely depends on where the battle takes place, so it's kind of a non-factor here. Goku also then goes on to absorb the Super Saiyan God form into his base, and can go Super Saiyan 1, 2, 3 and God on top of that. This would be post-Battle of Gods Goku, would be far stronger than Saitama, but immeasurable speed Saitama would be far faster. If I had to pick a winner though, I would say that Saitama, as Goku's you know multipliers have an in as a finite power increase, well, Saitama would be infinitely faster. Unless you say the Super Saiyan God is an infinite level multiplier, Saitama would win otherwise, or it would just be a stalemate. Then it gets a bit weird, because there aren't any major changes for a few arcs. Goku and Vegeta get new forms, being Super Saiyan Blue, which is the equivalent of Super Saiyan go God going on top of Super Saiyan, uh, which, would, which would make them 50 times stronger, faster and more durable than Super Saiyan God on top of an already God base form. With this, Saitama is completely out of his depth in terms of power, however is still infinitely faster, making the likelihood of a stalemate more imminent. Even low multiversal scaling for Saitama would be useless here, as he was able to kick away hyperspace portals. If we assume that Saitama is literally kicking hyperspace and not just a portal, Saitama would be low multiversal, as a hyperspace is considered more than three dimensions. But Goku is already like far beyond infinity, so this doesn't really matter and would only make him stronger than Super Saiyan Goku at the very least. The Universe 6 doesn't really, like, the Universe 6 arc doesn't really change anything either besides Goku being able to use Kaioken times 10 on top of Super Saiyan Blue, which is a technique which amplifies his power by 10 times, but like with Blue being a 10 times of God, it doesn't really change anything. Goku Black arc does introduce some things which are certainly important. Firstly, Saitama going back in time is even less important, as Goku Black has the Time Ring, a device which allows him to travel forward and backwards in time and go to other timelines. Goku Black also displays a much higher ability to grow in battle than Saitama, being able to surpass Vegeta just by getting angry. This is despite the fact that Vegeta had 6 months to 1 year of straight training in peak you know, training conditions and was stomping out Goku Black, while Saitama only grew a few times in his fight against Garo. There are some interesting interesting things such as like, Goku Black being able to rip open space, Goku being able to seal people away with prep time, and Zamasu being outright immortal, where even being erased from existence won't be enough to kill him. 
When Goku Black and Zamasu fuse their, and their bodies break, they end up fusing with the universe, including all timelines past, present and future. While there are a limited amount of timelines, this would bare minimum be a low multiversal feat, and possibly even higher. With this, Infinite Zamasu would eventually become omnipresent after some amount of time, which would make him fast enough to deal with Saitama. Being omnipresent is the fastest form of known speeds, as you are literally everywhere and nowhere simultaneously. So, while it would take time, and Saitama isn't strong enough to take down Infinite Zamasu, not even acknowledging his immortality, Infinite Zamasu would become fast enough to eventually catch up with Saitama and kill him from there. The next level of speed scaling for Saitama is up to 5th dimensional. This is because Jen knows the statement of Saitama transcending space and time. With this, I've seen people say this would make him multiversal plus, uh, and for the sake of opinions, let's just consider it. With this, Saitama would be easily stronger than anyone in canon Dragon Ball quite easily. This is because while the Angels, the Grand Priest and Zen are all unfathomably stronger than the feats shown previously, we don't really know where they scale in terms of power, so we can't really say for sure that the Grand Priest would be able to win. However, there is one feat that could put the Grand Priest himself on par with Saitama here, as Saitama, or rather the Grand Priest, was able to create an infinite realm without time or space. If you take this as the Grand Priest transcending time or space, then the Grand Priest would be able to match Saitama in terms of power, and would just out-hack him due to how many more abilities he has. The only other scaling we have for Saitama, of, like for Saitama, of course, is that he is one punch man, he can one-shot everyone, he big funny gag. As stupid as that scaling is, if you want to use that, he would beat everyone in Dragon Ball, and I don't think you need me to tell you that. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, subscribe. I didn't fully go into some stuff like Goku and Vegeta end up surpassing Infinite Zamasu, immeasurable speed Dragon Ball characters post Goku Black arc, or the multiversal argument for Super Saiyan God, but this video is already really long as it is, and it's much more Saitama focused, so you can place your own personal Dragon Ball scaling into whatever you buy for Saitama and come to your own conclusions, which was the point of this video. Make your own decisions. Uh, I personally believe that Saitama is between multi solar system to galaxy levels of power, with the speed being hundreds of times faster than light, but if you don't, that's completely fine, and I'll see you next time.